so much easier to create an army of Daleks on an animation budget instead of a 1960s BBC budget. Welcome to the Time Treadmill. I'm Ron, and these are my sweaty thoughts about Doctor Who. The Power of the Daleks is a six-part story that is completely missing from the BBC archives. Very little video at all continues to exist from this story, aside from a few short clips. And therefore, all we really have is a bunch of telesnaps. And then, a couple of years on the 50th anniversary of this story, they released a full animated reconstruction. Now, I am definitely a fan of these animated reconstructions. I think given that we have full audio from every single episode, these animations are the best way to bring back these stories for a modern audience. I do enjoy the loose canon reconstructions, but those are primarily still pictures with the audio and really not accessible to a wide audience. Power of the Daleks is the first completely missing story to be fully restored through animation. Prior to this, animated reconstructions have been used to restore individual or perhaps two missing episodes in a story, like they did with The Invasion or with The Reign of Terror. But in this case, this is six full episodes restored, an entire end-to-end -end run. And coincidentally, at the time of its release, that made the run of the final episode of Tenth Planet up through the end of Power Daleks the longest single run of animated episodes in classic Doctor Who. That number is going to change, however, with the forthcoming release of The Faceless Ones, which when paired with the Macro Terror will make an even longer run of animated stories. I do appreciate on these reconstructions that they try to hew very closely to the original episode. Obviously they're constrained by the audio itself, but beyond that, they really do take great care to look at the existing telesnaps and to frame the shots and construct the scenes as closely as possible to the original aired episode. That being said, there are a few places where they take liberties. Animators as a group do like to sneak in their little in-jokes, and so if you watch carefully in this episode, you'll see on a bullet board, there's a call out to Bad Wolf that is made. That, of course, being a reference to Rose Tyler in the end of the Ninth Doctor's season. And there's another spot where they throw in a Waylon Utani logo, which is just there as a wink and a nod to anyone who's watching closely. Oh, and there is another spot where a piece of electronics has the Magpie Electronics logo on it. That's a brand that was first invented with the Tenth Doctor era, and since then it's been used frequently on little electronic bits and bobs. So it was kind of nice to see that thrown in as a little nod to the past. But I do have to say, as much as I enjoy the animated reconstructions, and I do think it's the best way to make these old stories accessible to a modern audience, there are drawbacks. And in particular, what you really lose are facial expressions. Now, the animators do try to do a good job of catching the expressions of the characters throughout the story, but there is just so much subtlety loss, especially in Patrick Troughton's face and how he conveys different scenes, that, that really does seem to be lost in the animation. And that, that's a shame. I have seen a couple of experiments with deepfake videos being used to reconstruct some missing episodes, or at least little pieces of them as a test run. And I think there's some promise there, but the technology isn't quite there yet. And the only way to do that properly would be to actually refilm those episodes, probably on blue screens and with live actors to keyframe off of to do the deepfake restoration. So it's possible. I don't see the technology quite there yet in 2020. But given how quickly deepfakes have evolved in the last few years and setting aside all of the scary implications of that. I do think that in another 10, 15 years, it actually might be possible to restore some of these missing episodes using that technology if the demand is still there. We'll see. So on the whole, a big thumbs up for this animated restoration. I watched the black and white version originally a couple of years ago, and now I'm watching the color version, and I'm really, really enjoying how they do that. And I genuinely appreciate the fact that they've made both available, both for purists who want to see it as close to the original as possible, and in color for a wider audience that makes it, again, more accessible to the masses. If you're thinking about dipping your toes into some classic Doctor Who and you never have before, this is actually a pretty good episode to step into. It's a brand new Doctor with Patrick Trout, and you really don't need to know anything about Ben or Polly to catch up with them. And the story itself, pretty much all you need to know is that Daleks are evil. This is definitely one worth checking out, and I do believe it's on BritBox, or at least it was the last time I looked. So definitely worth checking out there, or even picking up the DVD or Blu-ray. A definite thumbs up from the time treadmill. As for the story itself, well, I've got one more day of watching this, so I will leave it to tomorrow for me to discuss the plot points and, and my feelings on the story as a whole. So check in with me tomorrow. I'm really excited to wrap this thing up for you. I'll see you then.